everybody, this is Erica Sabo. Welcome back. Easily one of my favorite genres to date. The cyberpunk genre is something that has been a part of my life for a very long time now. Uh, whether we're talking in books or talking about in movies or in anime or whatever. It's something that's resonated with me because I've always been a fan of sci-fi. And what I love so much about cyberpunk is its marriage between such expansive worlds, yet still establishing a very human sense, a very speculative sense of existence. So today I, uh, I'm gonna highlight my top five cyberpunk anime of all time. These are anime that I feel have resonated with me in some truly amazing ways and it was hard it was really hard picking five of them because there's so many great ones out there and because of that i'm super interested in hearing what some of your favorites are as well i uh i love this genre very much and there are some truly amazing works within it so i guess let's get started now keep in mind, as usual, there is absolutely no order to this list. I never do orders because I can't actually put any of these into an order because they're so... Um, they, they interpret cyberpunk and existentialism, uh, etc. to very different levels. So I wouldn't, it doesn't feel fair to me to put them in some kind of order. So instead, think of this as just like an abstract form of just a group of anime that I really, really enjoy. There are definitely some that I gravitate more towards, but they're all really amazing in their own right. The first anime on my list, and is actually a feature film, is one that I think really, it does a very good job of encompassing the genre, and that anime is Ghost in the Shell. Now, this is going to be a... For me, while I do love standalone complex very, very much, and I love the world that it encompasses, I love how it goes much more into detail of the characters and of the world itself, there's something I really, really enjoyed about the original Ghost in the Shell, and how speculative it was, and how abstract it was. Uh, and in certain ways some people didn't like that because people want explanations, but I think one of my favorite things about this feature film in particular is the fact that you don't get all the answers that you want, you need to find them within yourself. From the moment I first glimpsed Ghost in the Shell, I knew I wanted to be part of its world. I knew it was a piece of work I would cherish for the rest of my life, not only for its beautiful representation of the cyberpunk genre, but of its experimental use of music and its deeply philosophical themes. Ghost in the Shell's true qualities lie within its storytelling and character development. It lies within its philosophical themes of existence and the extent of one's existence as an AI. How human can one become? What is it to be human? Nowadays we might consider these to be pretty generic themes to explore in the genre, but the way they were presented, and the way it compelled a whole genre to open minds to greater heights, is one of the most compelling things of all. Now the next anime on my list is one that you might not have heard of. It's one that doesn't really seem like it's going to be as compelling as it is because of its visual qualities, but I think that's part of what makes it one of the most unique choices on my list. This is uh, this is an anime called Kaiba, a very short anime, a very sad anime, but a very profound anime too. Kaiba is unique in the way it conceptualizes its world, as well as in its creative, childlike visual style. The idea of transferring and manipulating memories in particular is an extremely intriguing concept oftentimes missing in speculative works like this. As you might imagine, this then brings about several questions. What kind of world would we live in if you could transfer your memories into different bodies with your own free will? Would you try to escape the bad experiences and how would that affect you as a whole? Considering those experiences, good or bad, make us who we are, make us stronger people, would we become fragile husks simply mirroring what we wish ourselves to be? And in that way, Kaiba's childlike animation lends to that willingly blind naivete. The more I watched, the more I felt I was deeply ingrained in this world. The more I pondered what it means to experience those memories and what we would be like if we had the choice. Now, unlike Kaiba, the next anime on my list is one that I'm sure a lot of you have already seen and have experienced in some shape or form, and that is Akira. Now, when I'm going to be talking about this, I'm going to be talking about it as a whole, as both the feature film and the manga, because I feel like they do, they deserve to be together as, as, a, as a story, because there's so much that I feel like the feature film didn't encompass that the manga did. 
As an anime film, Akira is pretty cheesy to today's standards. It's compelling, but lacks a certain something compared to the manga, which in my opinion is much more speculative, inquisitive, adult, and philosophical in approach. While the feature film is heralded for its world, action somehow distracts from these underlying themes you only really get to experience on paper. However, as a whole, when taking the details the manga provides into account, Akira is a flawed masterpiece that deserves a spot on this list, despite my shifting opinions. The feature film may not have been the best adaptation of the manga, but that doesn't stop it from encompassing a disturbing world desperate for power and control. The next anime on my list is one that's probably known more as a manga than it is as an anime considering it was only an OVA. It was very short-lived, yet it somehow really became such a groundbreaking piece, and that is Battle Angel Alita. I find it really intriguing how profound it had become considering all of that, considering its limitations, considering how we didn't really get to experience it in the way that I feel like we should have. Now, will we get more? Um, probably not. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, but it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful cyberpunk anime that was actually one of my first uh, in in the genre and one that that still kind of haunts me to this day. Battle Angel Alita stuck with me in some truly memorable ways. It's an important pick on this list because of how much of an inspiration it is in the genre, often considered a classic, whether we're talking as an OVA in Battle Angel or as the long-running manga. The series offered us a glimpse into a world mad on cybernetics, so willing to manipulate the body to the point of sacrificing one's own identity. Watching our amnesiac cyborg protagonist Gally display such pure hopes and dreams and have them crumble in front of her eyes is heartbreaking. Her pursuit for humanity is dire, but she's always a step too far to fully grasp it. That naive desperation is easily one of the most compelling aspects of Battle Angel Alita. It lets us peer into the life of this weak girl who progressively becomes stronger from her experiences. In a way, it reminds me of the experiences we face in our daily lives and how hurtful those can be at times. It lets us reflect on feelings we'd rather not remember but be forced to face. We feel Gally's struggles as though they were our own, but we also get to experience her growth and accomplishments and see just how far she's willing to go to become better and brighter than she could have ever imagined, her true human potential. Now, the last anime on my list, and probably my favorite in all of this, is one called Serial Experiments Lane. Some of you may have heard of it, some of you may have not, but this is a... Uh, this is something that uh, still sticks with me, something that I found to be so ahead of its time, something that really encompasses the world we live in now, which makes it that much more disturbing, yet that much more intriguing. I, I love Lane, very much so, and this was actually uh, this was actually my first in the genre. Uh, I started very young and I'm really happy I was able to start so young and maybe that's why this genre in general uh, resonates with me so, but Serial Experiments Lane was my first and I'm, I'm very, very grateful to know that. There's something extremely visceral about the experience Serial Experiments Lane has to offer, that journey through the mind, body, and soul. At times it's deeply ingrained in the technological, other times it becomes transcendental, and that marriage between both the real and surreal proves it to be one of the strongest works on this list. The thing with Lane is that it's not one of the most caterable series either, which isn't a flaw per se, but may deter people from watching it. However, with some time and patience, it's quick to see why Lane's heavy use of experimental visuals, audio, and concepts each help build the world from the ground up. It depicts a world similar to our own, a world where we are dependent on an evolving technology. And as that technology grows, it starts to become a bigger and bigger part of our lives, in time overlapping our online and offline selves in some beautiful and scary ways. Lane is unique in that it directly asks its audience what it is to live and breathe in a world so close to our own, a world where we are the makers of our own reality. So I hope you enjoyed my top 5 cyberpunk anime of all time. This was a really, really, really tough choice considering how many great ones there are. And really, in a way, there really aren't that many uh, in, in, um, in anime. I don't find there to be that many cyberpunk works, to be honest. However, there's still enough that this, this was a tricky choice for me. And I'm really very curious to hear what some of yours are and why they are. So please leave that in the comments below for me, okay? Alright, I really hope you enjoy and please stay tuned for a lot more videos this week. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all later, okay? Alright, peace.